Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. Authorization in ASP.NET Core often seems to be a very hard topic, but in the end, trust me, it's not that complicated. And I'll prove it to you because in this video I'll show you what I think would be the easiest approach to understanding authorization in ASP.NET Core. And before we dive into code, let me briefly explain why I think that sometimes authorization seems to be very hard to grasp. And the primary reason for this is that authorization itself has a lot of different building blocks. And the flaws of the most of the documentation out there and different tutorials is that they try to teach you all the building block at once. And grasping all the building block at once is not something that comes very easy. So my approach to authorization is a little bit different. I want to strip out each building block from this authorization until we remain with the core. When we understand that, then we can add one building block at a time and authorization will become very easy. And the first two things that usually get mixed up when we talk about authorization is these two concepts of authentication and authorization. They are quite different. Authentication is the process through which you need to prove your identity based on some credentials and most often also based on a multi-factor authentication prompt. Authorization on the other side is the process of defining if you have access to certain actions in an application or not. It's true, authorization relies on authentication because if we don't have an authenticated user, then we cannot define if that user can access or can perform certain actions in your application or not. And usually the result of an authentication process is either an authentication cookie or a JSON web token. Now the cool thing in .NET is that we have all the tools at our disposal to just generate for instance JWTs and then use them for authorization purposes. So let me show you what I mean by that. First of all, we need to go to the terminal. And here in the terminal, we are currently in the root directory where the entire solution is. And to be able to create some JSON web tokens, we need to go to the folder where we have the project. So we have the CD and then to API. And once we are here, .NET provides us with a very nice tool, which is this .NET user JWTs. And then we can create. And the first type of JSON WT that we want to create is a one that would also contain the role of administrator. So if we just hit enter here, we will see that we just get this JSON web token back. So I'll just copy it and I'll move it to a notepad. Now in our application, we will have some requirements to restrict access to certain endpoints for users that are under a certain age. Therefore, we need to create two different JSON web tokens for that. The first one will create with an age that is actually okay. And you see that to do this, we use these claims and we define a claim which is named age and which has the value 20. So if we click here on this one, we get this token back and once again, I'll copy to a notepad. Now let's create also a token for an age that will not be okay for our application. So it would be exactly the same. The only difference is that in this case, the value of the age is 17. So let's generate this token and copy it to our notepad. And last but not least, let's also generate a just regular token without any role and without any additional claim. So we also copy this to our notepad. Now there are a few things that I wanted to show you because everything is made to work out of the box. Now when you create such a JSON web token for the first time, what it happens is that it automatically adds here some authentication configuration to our appsettings.development.json. And this will make sure that we will have this JSON bearer scheme and that we will have the valid audiences and the valid issuer. So basically all the things needed for ASP.NET Core to validate the token, which is another building block of authorization on which we don't want to concentrate today. The final thing that I would like to show you is this JWT.io website. And that's a very nice feature and tool to use by developers developers because it allows you to place this JSON web token here. For instance, this is the first one that we have created and it shows you actually what information is contained on that JSON web token. And if we take a look here, we see that, okay, we have some different standard information that we have on all JWTs, but we also have this role information, which is administrator. So remember, that's exactly the role that we have added. Also, if we put, if we place a token here that also contains the age, you see that once again, we have the default information that we have on tokens, but then we have this information about age and it is the value 20. And usually this type of information like age or other type of such information that you can provide on JSON web tokens when you create them are called claims. 
So you will hear this a lot. A claim is nothing else than a key and a value. So a piece of information that you can use to your advantage when it comes to performing authorization. Now that we have several different JSON web tokens, we can simulate requests coming from four different users. So how do we perform authorization in ASP.NET Core? Well, the answer is actually very simple. When a request comes in, in that specific request in ASP.NET Core, we have a lot of information about the authenticated user and about the request itself. And we can use that information to custom define if the user can access a certain endpoint or not. The first thing that we will need to actually use authentication and authorization is a NuGet package. And I have already installed a package and the name of this package is Microsoft ASP.NET Core Authentication Jot Bearer. With this in place, we just need to add some services that will allow us to work with authentication and authorization. So it just simply build our services at authentication and at JWT better because we will work with JSON web tokens in this API. And then we have builder services at authorization. And then the other thing is that we need to also add here to the middleware pipeline an authentication middleware. And this is app use authentication. And now as we have everything in place, let me just add here this dummy middleware because this will help us by placing a breakpoint here, help us understand exactly what information ASP.NET Core provides us regarding the authenticated user and how it provides this information. So let me debug this application and then move over to Postman. Let's remove the trees or no, we, ne we need an authorization header, but first of all, we need to make sure that it contains the JSON web token or one of the JSON web tokens that we have created previously. And I will use here the very simple JSON web token that doesn't have a role and that doesn't have any additional information to it. Let me just hit the get and let's click send. Okay, so now we did hit the breakpoint. And in this breakpoint, basically we are in the middleware and I wanted us to stop here because in the middleware we get information about the request and we get this information in the HTTP context. And you see that we have this context, which is the default context. Now on the HTTP context, there is a lot of information that we get and potentially really every piece of information from the HTTP context, you can use to define if a user has access to that specific endpoint or not. However, what's very important for us now is this user. Now, the idea is that as long as the request is authenticated, we will have this user and we will have this is authenticated set to true on identity. Now, the idea is that as said earlier, we can have or the result of authentication is either a cookie or it is a JSON web token. Now, the cool thing about authentication and ASP.NET Core is that the moment that the request has a cookie or it has a JSON web token, ASP.NET Core automatically validates it and it places all the information from that cookie or from the JSON web token in this HTTP context user property. And if we go more here, we see that in this user we have these claims and here you would see a list of all the claims that we have on the, on the specific JSON web token. If you go in this user identity, which contains the identity of the user itself, you can once again get the claims, but here you get a lot of other information about the roles. If the user has some roles, you get this property is authenticated to true or to false if the, if the request is not authenticated. But the core idea is here that whenever a request comes in, ASP.NET Core provides you this information about the authentication of the user. And then you can simply reuse this to define if the user should have access to the endpoint that he or she intended to call or not. So now we know exactly how ASP.NET Core gets information about the authenticated user and how it provides this information to us. So the next step would be to get this information and based on this information to define if that specific user is authorized to perform a certain action in our application or not. So let's implement this in our very simple API. Now let's go to our application and define exactly on which endpoints what actions users are able to perform. And to showcase you this, we move over to this next controller. Now, this is a cars controller. We presumably want to create an API for a car rental agency. And here to this controller, we can see the different cars and we can also create new cars. We want to make sure that only authenticated users are authorized to access these specific endpoints. 
So to achieve this, the only thing that we need to do is we need to decorate the entire controller with this authorize attribute. And while we do this, it will automatically basically instruct that only users that are authenticated will be able to access any of the actions that are in this controller. So let me run the application again. Let me here change the endpoint. It should be cars, it would be get. And once again, I don't have any authorization header. So if I send the request, right now I will receive this 401 on authorized because I need a token, I need to be authenticated to be able to access this endpoint. So if I just add this authorization header and if I send the request again, this time we see that I get all the information back. However, when it comes to this car controller, we have also this post method, which is a create a car. Now, regular users shouldn't be able to create cars. Probably only admins of these applications or editors might be able to create cars in our system. So that's why on this specific endpoint for create, we would like to enforce a further authorization constraint and that should be that only an administrator would be able to create a car. To achieve this, we will also decorate this specific action with this authorized attribute and in the authorized attribute, we also have the option to specify a role or several roles that have access to this endpoint. And these type of, author or of authorized attributes are cumulative. So it means that first it is applied this one, like the user needs to be authenticated, obviously. But then if a request comes in for this specific endpoint, it will also enforce that the user has the administrator role. So let me run again the application and I want to make this to be a post right now. It should be on the cars endpoint. And if we go to the body, you'll see that I have already prepared a body here. And let's go back to the headers and let's click Ascend. Now we received this 403 forbidden. And the reason why we did this is because here in this authentication or in this authorization token, we don't have the administrator role. It is just the regular token that doesn't have any further information. So I'll come back here to my magic notepad and I have saved here the token that also contains the administrator role. So let me just go here and I would just replace this token that I had earlier with the new token that should contain also the administrator role. And now if I make a request, I'll get this 201 created. Now let me go to this rentals controller and the core concept of this rentals controller is that when I make a post request to this endpoint, I am able to just rent a car. So I presumably just provide a car ID here and then there will be some logic that will make me rent the car. However, I'm not interested right now in the logic, I'm interested in the authorization part. The thing here is that we want to have this requirement that only users that are above 18 years old will be able to get a car rented. Now, if for the roles, we could very easily in the authorized attribute just specify a role and then ASP.NET Core did automatically everything for us, for these very custom requirements that are, let's say, business rule or business specific, we need to define our own ways and requirements and how we should handle them. Unfortunately, ASP.NET Core provides us with a very simple mechanism to add our custom logic to this authorization mechanism. And this mechanism implies that we can create our own requirements. So I will create a class and I will name this class minimum age requirement. And to make this class be an authorization requirement, what we can do here is just simply inherit this I authorization requirement. Now, in our case, we would like to be able to custom register the age or the minimum age when we just register this policy or a policy. So to do that, what we'll do here is we'll just set a property with the minimum age and we'll take in the constructor an integer that will represent the minimum age. Now that we have defined the requirement, the next step is we need to define a handler that will be able to handle this specific requirement and define if the user is authorized to perform an action or not. So let me create a new class here and I will name this class minimum age handler. And to make this class an authorization handler, we can simply inherit this authorization handler class, which is also a generic one and in which we will specify the requirement which we want to handle through this handler. Obviously, we'll just need to implement here this missing method as part of the contract of the after class. 
and this would be the handle requirement async. And here comes the part where we implement our own logic. Here in this authorization handler context, you also get access to the HTTP context that we have looked into earlier. So basically you can just really create your own logic based on all that information that you have there in the HTTP context, in the HTTP context user, and define if the user is authenticated or it, if the user is authorized or not. In our case, the logic will be very simple. We just use the context user and claims and we look for a claim with the type age. And then we parse that age and if it is greater than or equal to the minimum age requirement, then we have this constant succeed. This is how we notify ASP.NET Core that, hey, this handler has succeeded, the user is authorized. And then we return this task completed task. As the next step, we need to go back here and we need to actually register a service, a singleton one, in which we will say that, hey, I want to register an authorization handler and the authorization handler should be this minimum age handler. Through this mechanism, we have registered our own handler to this entire authorization thing in ASP.NET Core. Now, last but not least, the one thing that we still need to do, we need to add a policy to ASP.NET Core authorization to actually instruct it that it should look into our requirement and that the requirement should actually successfully pass. So to do this, we will have this builder services add authorization. And we had this earlier, but here I just wanted to add some new options to it. So I'll just remove it from here for now. And here we have options and on these options, we can add policies and we can add as many policies as we need. In our case, we just specify a minimum age name, which is a string that represents the name of the policy. And then on the policy, we say that requirements and add, and we have here to add a new minimum age requirement. And by the way, you can once again go very granular here because on each policy, you can register different requirements. So it is not that you just need one requirement. You can have several different requirements. And in order for this policy to pass, all those requirements would have to be passed successfully, otherwise not. Now, if we go back to the rentals controller, one thing that we want to have is, first of all, we want to have an authorize here for the entire controller. But then for this specific action, we want to have this authorized and we can provide in the constructor of this authorized the name of the policy that we want to impose on this specific endpoint. Now, let me run the application. And before we'll be able to make the call, we know that we also need to change the authenticated user. So I'll go back here to my magic notepad and then I'll get this token for the correct minimum age. So if I go back to Postman, I can simply change the token. And then if I click send, you see that I get this response back that is rented. However, if I get the other token where I have the wrong minimum age and click send, you'll see that we get once again 403 forbidden because in our case, we don't meet this minimum age requirement. When it comes to authorization in ASP.NET Core, that's mostly it. This is the core. And as you saw, it's really not difficult to understand. It's just the ability to define very granularly which user is allowed to perform an action or not. And we can do all this based on the information that ASP.NET Core already provides to us in each request. And trust me, what I have showed you in this video will cover probably around 80% of all your authorization needs in your ASP.NET Core apps. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you're for the first time here. And if you have any question or just want to get in touch with me, head over to the comment section and just drop a line and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.